This is really an extreme diet to say the least. Can you imagine eating meat and only meat for every single meal? Well, there's a group of people that are taking that to the next level and they believe it's the way to optimal health and performance. And you should know that benefits are still up for debate. Do some doctors freak out when they hear about the carnivore diet? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. In this video, we're going to hear a doctor's response, a TV doctor's response to someone doing the carnivore diet. And we'll be sure to wait till the end to hear my final thoughts. Before we dive into today's video, I want to personally invite you to join my reverse type two diabetes online course. In this course, you'll learn exactly how to implement a ketogenic diet safely so you can reverse your type 2 diabetes and prediabetes for good. This is truly a transformational and proven program to help you achieve normal blood sugars and be free of type 2 diabetes without medication. Enrollment is open now through February 17 only. See the link in the description below to sign up. I look forward to seeing you there. Travis Statham is a simple dude, but he's strict about his diet. He eats the same thing for every meal. Me. Do you consider your diet extreme? No. Because I'm not eating carbs that are making me hungry all the time, that I've got lots of energy. It's clean, long-lasting energy. Statham is part of a movement called carnivory, where followers only eat meat. No veggies, no fruits, no carbs. Their argument, meat worked for the cavemen, and it can work for us too. <laughs> well, it's interesting to see the response that it's so extreme when it depends where you start it from. If you're eating lots of carbs, then a carnivore diet can seem very extreme. If you're eating a low carb keto kind of diet, which is one that I teach for reversal of diabetes and obesity and other metabolic issues, then doing carnivore is not so extreme. It's just changing the uh, vegetables, swapping those out for other things or just not eating them. But the idea of doing this has been around a while and the popularization has come from doctors and, and people doing it alike. Travis has a website called meatrition.com, which is actually pretty reasonable. It has lots of resources that I typically use in the teaching when I talk about low carb and high protein, high fat diets. It's interesting that he's been following the science actually and putting a resource out there for people to learn about the diet. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that Travis had put out a public facing website to learn more about eating just meat. I don't think I've ever seen so much meat in someone's fridge. Travis says it was meat that helped him eliminate cravings, shed pounds, and build muscle. Wow. And he's not picky. Any meat will do, even when it's raw. The hard part is raw, it takes a little more chewing. I'm you know? not to take your word for it. Dr. Drew Pinsky tried the diet himself for three weeks. Within four or five days, I felt so much better, I couldn't believe it. I still had lost a ton of weight, my strength went up, my sleep went down, my energy went up. He said that pretty fast, but he said he did really well on it. So one doctor tries it and had a good result. Now, Travis's girlfriend is on board. So for me, I lost 30 pounds without exercising over a course of a summer. There was no afternoon burnout. Most days start with a coffee. Lunch today is fast food. You got four patties, you got some cheese, you got some bacon, and yeah, this I'm is all how you live your life. It's all how I live my life. And for dinner, it's a pork chop. Travis runs a Facebook group for meatheads where dieters share stories about how they've cut the sides, adopted a strict diet, and are feeling better than ever. I think everyone should be willing to experiment. Well, so we have a testimonial couple who are doing it and doing well. And, and there are many, many other people following this kind of approach with good results, apparently. And yet it does go against things that we've been taught, right? That you have to have fruits and vegetables. And so a traditional diet like this without all the vegetables will seem odd to someone who's only used to today's world. Although Dr. Drew tried it and said he felt fine. 
Travis and his girlfriend go through about 10 pounds of meat every three days. In terms of overall health, there are some big question marks. Travis hasn't been to the doctor since adopting the diet in more of fruits and vegetables. That's me. I'm more of a fruits and vegetables type of guy. Dr. George, uh, George and Jen Ashton have more. George, back with you. <laughs> exactly. I actually like made I like fruits and veggies. Dr. Jen Ashton yeah. is here. I feel like I should just sort of tee this up. I mean, George, medically and nutritionally, it comes down to one word. Why? You can lose weight on a cotton candy diet, right? That doesn't make it healthy. Yeah, so that's too bad. The initial reaction I was hoping would be at least one of curiosity. We're not between two ferns here, but between two strawberry bushes. If people really want to go back to caveman living, they're missing about 10,000 years in biologic changes, changes in our environment, changes in our body, changes in the organisms in our body. But remember, the caveman or cavewoman also ate berries. So this diet is lacking in a lot of ways. The specific risk of going all meat. Well, there's a couple things. First of all, what are you not eating? So you're not getting fiber, you're not getting fruits and vegetables. And I want to show you something else. Come over here, George. Well, so this is, I, I was thinking maybe she was a traditionally trained dietitian where they have certain fixed rules that they're taught. And since dietitians aren't physicians and haven't gone out to get special training, they can't teach things that I can teach because I'm a physician and got special training in obesity medicine. So, you know, but if, if the first lead of a criticism of a carnivore diet is that there's no strawberries, but that's a pretty minor criticism to, to lead with. But then now we're getting into the lack of fiber, fruits and vegetables, things that actually are not so important as everyone thinks. So if you think of this coffee, French press, which I love, and the coffee grounds as high protein load, when your kidneys filter that out, yeah, you know, you're getting some filtration, but you're getting a lot of this residue. And in someone with kidney disease, that's not great. In someone with healthy kidneys, high protein is probably not going to damage your kidneys. But again, what else are you missing? And if this is purely for weight loss, there are a lot of better ways to do it than just... And there are special concerns with red meat, especially as you get older as well. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not quite sure what that demonstration showed, some residual coffee grounds. I think it was supposed to demonstrate that the protein harms the kidneys, which is another myth that is so hard to get rid of because, as you learn, discrimination and prejudice can't be overcome with data, that unfortunately. And so now we're getting into the fears about red meat, which if you've heard any of my discussions about this before, there's small correlations in these studies and correlation does not mean causation, but let's get to the idea that eating red meat is bad now. Well, red meat we know in high doses is a carcinogen. It can lead to cancer of the GI tract. So again, it's really, this is not the way to go. Well, actually she's correct that the organizations have labeled red meat as a carcinogen. I don't think that's an appropriate labeling of it. But that's not incorrect. And in fact, some guideline and, and organizations do call out red meat as an issue. But I've gone to some of these meetings and one of them really was a bunch of plant-based sort of low, low meat eating researchers all getting together, coming up with a sort of echo chamber view that red meat is bad. And most experts in evidence-based medicine do not think that it's a it's a causal relationship. It's a correlational one that's so small that we shouldn't worry about the association between red meat and cancer, but other organizations do. Okay, what is the one? All right, I'm going to show you. George, it's all about your people. It's the Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet. diet. If you want to call it the paleo-like diet, the Ashton diet, it's about balance. It's about getting healthy fats. It's about getting fruits, vegetables. This is a perfect way to go. You get some broccoli, some salmon, some, oh, I love this salad, <laughs> spinach salad. Well, then and that looks pretty good, too. So uh, let's see, there's no, what's this t traditional diet? There's no... Doritos and Fritos, and, and sorry to call out specific brands, but so actually that is kind of like a keto diet that I teach, where there is some vegetables, some greens, uh, no berries at first there, but big chicken or pork chop, whatever that is, that actually kind of looks like a healthy way of eating that's not so far from a carnivore diet. So very interesting to see one word have such an extreme reaction 
when you know a lot of that plant stuff really just kind of goes through us we don't absorb it we don't have cellulase which is the, the enzyme that breaks down cellulose so interesting to be worried that these things aren't in the diet if you are worried about that a lot of people will explain have some liver have have a multivitamin if you're worried about missing out on some of these vitamins and if someone says well what a deficient diet you have to add a vitamin just call out the vegans where you know it's a deficient diet and you have to add vitamin b12 because b12 is not found but in animal products so if you're going to do a diet that has a deficiency why not just take whatever is deficient rather than say you shouldn't even do it what they're missing out here is that some people really do get beneficial health effects from cutting out all those carbs even doing a carnivore diet so this is not really a balanced view of someone promoting and someone detracting from it and uh, just as a with this video up a balanced diet really was a creation a term including food groups was a term created to to identify things that should be on a plate i don't see a carnivore diet being an unbalanced diet nutritionally because it has the nutrition that you need so careful with the throwing out terms like food groups and balanced diet because it really doesn't have a specific meaning. But again, if you want to go back to caveman era where the lifespan was shorter than it is now, this is not the way You're to You're not do saying it. no meat. Well, I didn't understand that comment. I assumed there were infections and things that it wasn't all diet related to have a shorter lifespan. Some argue that modern indigenous peoples actually lived quite a long time. No, absolutely not. You know, lean meat, lean protein is fine, but to subsist only on meat, whether it's raw or cooked and water, there is, there, you're not going to get my medical or nutritionist stamp of approval on that one. Gertrude doctor there. <laughs> We're going to do air, the air <laughs> diet. Yeah, well, too bad, but not surprising that a traditionally trained old paradigm doctor would think that a carnivore, carnivory diet is evil or, you know, terrible. And there needs to be more scientific explanation and exploration, I, I believe, before we really know for whom there might be an issue. If you do a carnivore diet or, or what vulnerabilities there might be, but in the short run, it certainly can reverse things like type two diabetes and even inflammatory problems that doctors can't fix. So it, it behooves us to take this seriously as a legitimate tool and see just how how harmful it might be i'm reminded of 25 years ago when i started the research with jeff volick although we were separate labs separate research groups we started looking at what was called the atkins diet and everyone thought you would die you know die tomorrow if you ate all that fat and then through the lens of 25 years of research and textbooks and papers being written it didn't come true and so I'm, I'm kind of remembering that the first, you know, hue and cry about how bad Atkins was really wasn't founded in science. This may be the same thing for a carnivore diet. And, you know, I really hope that time will tell, meaning that we do research and collect data on people about their vulnerabilities rather than say, don't do it. And, you know, it's so, it's so crazy because it actually has helped many, many people even in my sphere of influence. Well, I hope you find that helpful. If you're interested in more carnivore information, check out meatertion.com. That's Travis's website. And in fact, I'm going to review one on video by one of my teachers, Steve Finney, that's at that website. So stay tuned and be sure to like if you like, subscribe so you don't miss out on further content and ring the notification bell. Look for new content two times a week now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.